Today, I'm gonna to show you what it's like to drive a BMW M6 Grand Coupe. This is one of the coolest cars that BMW has ever made and drives just as nice as it looks. Let's hop on into the interior here. One of the main parts of the interior is this sweeping center console that actually goes all the way to the back. We've got an Eddie there working hard on his phone. Uh, you don't have a great seat right here, but you can fit somebody. How is the legroom and headroom back there? The, diff the distance between the seatbelt buckle and the seatbelt is approximately like three inches. So you, you, know, have you have to be like three inches wide to sit there. Well, yeah, that's... The headroom, leg legroom is great. Headroom is a little... I'm a little my head limited. Because of the raked roof line, because of the sexy profile. But I mean, yeah, but but pretty good. You can fit four full size adults in here, no problem. I love the carbon fiber. Uh, you've got a nice big display. The leather steering wheel feels really good in your hands, and the DCT, the paddles are positioned very, very nicely. You've also got this Bang & Olufsen upgraded sound system that comes with the executive package. Watch this. We turn on the sound system, and that raises. Beautiful metal here. Love the way that system looks. We've got a partial digital, partial analog display. BMW has done a really, really nice job of integrating both of them. We've got a heads up display that has gorgeous graphics and makes shifting as well as knowing what the speed limit locally is very, very easy. Let's go ahead and put it in drive. As you can see here on the dash, there are tons of modes you can put this car in. We can put, change the suspension from comfort to sport to sport plus as well as the steering settings. The steering weight is actually really heavy in the M6 when you put it into Sport Plus mode. I do enjoy that though because you can select basically any amount of steering effort that you want. Now, I'll get this out of the way. It is not a super nimble sports car. They didn't work any crazy magic that made a large 4,300 pound plus sedan handle like a one series. It is a big car, but the limits uh, of grip as well as its handling capabilities are gonna be likely far outside what the normal buyer of this car will be able to experience. For people who wanna go on the track, of course you can get uh, the competition package which is fitted on this car, uh, which comes with 20% stiffer springs as well as a bump to 600 horsepower from the 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 uh, as opposed to a lowly 560 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. You can also get insanely expensive $9,300 carbon ceramic brakes, which this car also has. Those don't actually make you stop any better, but what they do is make it so there is no brake fade. So if you're repeatedly beating on this car on the track, you won't all of a sudden press an extremely soft pedal and not slow the car down at all. Downshifts respond really quickly, and man, when you floor it, does the car thrust forward. First gear pull. Little wheel spin. Whew. It is definitely a really, really quick car. Even in the stiffest setting, the car actually rides pretty well. I doubt most people are going to be driving it in Sport Plus, uh, so we'll put it uh, back into Comfort. Well, if I can do that correctly, there we go. The competition package, like I said, comes with 20% stiffer springs. It's a little bit of an oxymoron on a car that's more of a luxury cruiser that's also performance oriented because it's so big it's not going to be the best car in the world around the track so do you really need that added stiffened suspension and the carbon ceramic brakes probably not but for the people who have the money to spend on it uh, by all means it does improve the car uh, so does the executive package six thousand dollars comes with heads up display Bang & Olufsen sound system, heated and ventilated seats, heated seats in the rear, and sunshades. All right. <laughs> so this thing is absolutely a burnout machine when traction control is off. The interesting thing is you didn't have that much communication with the road. The only thing, only reason I could tell that the tires were slipping is because obviously I'm aware that the car is supposed to accelerate much faster than it was and the revs were climbing and the car was slightly tilting to the side, but you didn't have that choppiness normally associated with breaking the tires loose. The car is pretty isolated from the road. You do have a little bit of wind noise, slightly more than I actually would have imagined, but I forgive it. Wow, look at that. Was, I think it was a Grand Sport with a huge wing. Overall, the car is 
fun and a great experience no matter which seat you're in, except for the one in the middle in the back. That's probably terrible. But riding in the car, it's very, very comfortable and luxurious, and, and it's a fun experience being in uh, this awesome of a vehicle. And then from the driver's seat, obviously, uh, the driving dynamics are great for a vehicle of this size. Don't expect it to feel like an M2, but it does well for how heavy it is. Uh, it's a livelier, more playful version of the RS7 because it's rear wheel drive. It likes to spin the tires like nobody's business and I'm sure it can probably drift really well. Uh, whereas the RS7 has traction at all times. So it, it's a different style of, of having fun. Uh, I actually prefer the way the M6 Grand Coupe drives. It doesn't put the power down nearly as well, but it is a ton of fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.